Rice in Africa is becoming um, is becoming more and more a staple food. In nineties, um, rice was not a staple food we, because we had uh, maize, we had uh, uh, other crop like planting. But uh, more and more people are eating a lot of rice in most of the country in West and Central Africa, and also even in East Africa. So rice is becoming uh, a staple food uh, in Africa. We have uh, um, constraint and to overcome those challenges, we have to use also new tools like uh, uh, marker uh, information to really enhance the, the breeding program. And uh, those tools still new in Africa. We, will, we have been training uh, uh, young scientists, we have been training also breeders uh, in Africa uh, to, be, to understand the tools and to be able to, to assist them uh, introducing those tools in their program so that they can enhance the program. With all those tools that we are taking into account now, we will be able to, to boost the production. The production is limited because of the constraint. We have in the environment where we have so many diseases, uh, about stresses, um, some constraints are endemic to Africa. And uh, like virus, rice yellow motor virus, you can find it only in Africa. You have some, you have bacteria live blight all over, but the strain, is Africa strain is specific to Africa. So those there are some issues that are environment specific and then we have to deal with those, uh, uh, those constraints and to boost the, the, the program. We are, we are putting in place a good strategy and we hope that we will get there. It can help you first to better characterize the parental line. Those parental line at the starting point to know which gene are in which each of those parental line. What is the variability among those parental line? Without knowing what you have in your gene plasma, how can you tap into the gene plasma? Let, I will take the example of Optimus. Optimus is one of the tools that uh, GCP have been developing through the IBP. G this tool can help the breeder to to know for each of the parent line what is the favorable allele for a specific trait that he can use and then make a decision to start doing his crosses and develop the progeny. And then um, you can use marker assisted selection or marker assisted recurrent selection. Uh, uh, the, the idea here is just to introduce the marker information in your breeding program because that will help you to, to speed the program. Marker information can give you the marker can give you the information that the phenotyping will give you but in the later generation. So that helps you to speed to speed the, the program. First it will help you to choose the parents for crosses in the more efficient way. Second and then you will make sure that the progeny you have the variability you are looking for. Second, you will know where the allele are because you will, uh, when you use the marker, you will know exactly where the gene are. You can use those information to say, okay, this line has the gene, and then just cross them and r really reduce the time uh, to develop the new varieties. You can normally in the what we call traditional way breeding uh, scheme. You need 10 years to get the new varieties. By using marker uh, assisted selection or marker recurrent assisted selection, you can short, shorten the, 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 the time to four years. And this is a, a huge gain. Yes, half time. A huge gain in terms of money, in terms of time. And also, the beauty of the marker is that 
You can also, during this four-year uh, work uh, of marker assist by, uh, where you are using marker, the, the, the progeny that you, are, you will be getting, you can really give to farmer a progeny which is close to the, his, his preferred varieties, but in which you just introduce the gene of interest. So it's uh, a, a, an efficient way to, to improve a prefer uh, a specific varieties. Through the GCP, a capacity building program will also continue because GCP took it as a very important uh, component of his program. And uh, we are building uh, uh, and uh, through this program, we are really building the capacity, the human capacity in Africa. Our role is to really to, to assist our nurse, to train them, to give sh uh, uh, either through short-term training or long-term training or, uh, or on-job on training by assisting them to use these tools. They can just bring the sample at Africa Rise and they will extract, we will assist them to extract the DNA, to dilute it, and then they can um, either do the genotyping with us, or if it's a large set of sample, we can outsource to KBioScience through uh, 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 the Generation Challenge Program. Yes, actually, I'm leading uh, one of the challenge, rice challenge initiative, um, uh, focusing on the on the drought. Rice is becoming very important crop in Africa, and uh, when you look at the country which are producing or consuming rice, um, the the production uh, it have been um, have been uh, reduced by a lot of constraint. And drought is among one of the constraints that uh, we are facing in Africa. And so, um, through the project uh, I'm leading, uh, we, are, we are really using an innovative approach, which is the use of uh, biparental marker assisted recurrence selection to tackle drought. You know, drought, because it's a complex trait, you have so many mechanism of so many, um, uh, you have a physiological component, you have a genetic component, you have uh, also environmental component. So um, you really need to, to have uh, uh, all tools, necessary infrastructure, necessary tools to tackle that trait. And uh, through this, uh, this project, the Generation Challenge Program, we're able to provide to us all the, the, the necessary infrastructure to, to measure the water, to measure um, the drought in the environment where you, you are. So in addition to that project, the Generation Challenge Program put in place an infrastructure project, which is very important. That project uh, 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 really helped to put in place, to buy the equipment, necessary equipment, necessary infrastructure needed to, to handle the drought uh, trait. So we put all those equipment in the field, in, the, in our partner country, and we develop uh, the population, uh, mass population, and those mass population have been phenotyped in different environments uh, first on the uh, normal condition to see the yield potential of the population. And then they are now being phenotyped also on the drought condition. And uh, by using a mass approach, we hope that we'll be able to, to identify um, genetic regions associated to drought and then to accumulate the favorable allele and um, develop a, a new line uh, that will uh, that the breed the farmer the breeder and the farmer will be using in the next uh, decade in Africa
The project is, uh, is very challenging, dealing on drought, with drought, uh, and also and with uh, a new approach, which is mass, is very challenging. So we are working as a network. Um, several CG centers are involved in this. We have uh, IRI is our partner in this project. SIAT also is our partner. CIRAD is, uh, is Advanced Institute in France is our partner. And we, also, we have uh, our uh, partner in Africa, the national program, uh, uh, IUR, Institute of the Economy Rural, based in Mali. We have uh, INERA from Burkina Faso. They are also our partner, and NCRI in Nigeria. Those are our, our partners. We came together to we work together to tackle the, this, tra this uh, important uh, trait constraint. And the, the, the way we are working together is that we really, they are the, the, our NAS partner um, um, identify the elite line, what they call the important uh, line for in their country. So we are working with those lines. We, we, um, we use those lines. They develop uh, the material. They uh, evaluate the material in the environment. They look at the adaptability of the material in their own environment. They tell us this material, because at the origin we had uh, four population that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that was, which were selected. And those four population were evaluated by our partner in their own environment. They tell us what they think about the population. And all together we came, we discussed about the population and based on the, the criteria that we all set up, we choose one of the population that they have, they have evaluated in their environment. They send us the seed of those population and we multiply the seed and now we share the distributed the seed to all partners. So we are all working together on the same population that were selected, um, were first uh, uh, evaluated for the general adaptability uh, by our partner, NAS partner. And uh, we are now evaluating those populations in terms of yield potential and also in terms of drought in six environments including also the CG Center. The goal will be to identify the geno genomic region associated to drought and, and to develop new varieties that will uh, fit into those uh, environments. And what we did also in this project is that we characterized all the environment where our target population environment have been characterized in terms of the drought profile. How is the drought occur in those environments? Which, which are the frequency, so that we will, uh, we will, uh, we will know exactly our target, uh, the target population of environment. And then when we will develop uh, specific varieties, we know this varieties is for this target. It will fit with this because we have characterized our environment before.